Hey, Dr. Matt, I'm back. So if you've been around the health sphere or the health accumulation camp, which is that's what we are, we're health accumulators here, right? For any length of time, then you've probably come across this nu nutrient or amino acid called N-acetylcysteine, that's supplement. And uh, commonly known as NAC, N-acetylcysteine is NAC, NAC. Um, hopefully, you recognize that it is a superstar, a rock star <laughs> amongst amino acids and amongst supplements you can take to support health, vitality, um, immunity, respiratory function. You know, the 21st century, there's a lot coming at us. So we need, a, we need lots of support these days. And if not, if you have not been privy to um, the benefits of NAC, then um, I'm hoping in this video, I can help, uh, you know, really bring forth, bring to light some of these things. And you can be like, wow, this is exciting. There's things out there that could help me. So, you know, it's, it's wild, but this simple amino acid, N-acetylcysteine, NAC, it has anti-inflammatory effects. It has antioxidant effects. It has antibacterial effects, has antiviral effects. It has anti-cancer properties, mucolytic effects. You know, it's, it has a lot of effects that are very, very, very positive. And it's going to be troubling. It's going to be hard to find things that it doesn't help, it doesn't benefit. You know, we use it as part of so many therapies um, in our office, from respiratory to um, you know, different cancer therapies, supportive, um, to, uh, you know, um, digestive therapies or biofilm busting and stuff, you know, because there's so much awesomeness. Um, that comes from this you know, amino acid. And it, uh, you know, the main thing I think most of us think about or know about is that it increases glutathione levels. And glutathione is our master antioxidants or mother of all antioxidants. And uh, you know, it is a massive supporter of detoxification in our body. And if you're gonna have something that's going to greatly increase glutathione production, such as NEC, then Life's going to be good, right? That's, that's, that is massively supportive. Your liver's happier, your kidneys are happier, your eyes are happier. Um, if we get an infection, our body is a whole lot happier if it has sufficient glutathione levels. Uh, because the, the benefits of glutathione, you know, in every cell in our entire body, they're vast. The cleansing effect, the detoxification effect, uh, supporting, you know, whether you got chronic infections, you got heavy metal use, me heavy metal disease, whatever it is, glutathione, the aging process itself, glutathione is massively helpful at... Um, decreasing that and slowing it down and you know you know you could be a 20 year old having low glutathione levels and a 60 year old who has great glutathione levels and guess what the 60 year old is going to do pretty good 20 year old they might have, some, might have some trouble so nac it's been used for so many years like 60 years set you know seven years maybe almost right now you know and it has an extremely safe highly safe um safety record and there's been uh, you know writings dating back to like 1962, in which they talk about you know the benefits um, of N-acetylcysteine for a lot of respiratory issues. Uh, in fact, the the American Association of Thoracic Surgery at their annual meeting in 1962 actually uh, you know goes through you know talk about the the massive benefits of this amino acid, and uh, the fact that like doesn't seem like there's much side effect to it. Uh, in standard medicine. NAC is commonly used for acetaminophen toxicity or, or Tylenol toxicity, where that uh, you know person took too much of those, um, or maybe took them for too long, and uh, these medications ended up um, you know kind of destroying the liver and leading to liver failure. Um, but you know if a person can receive a really high dose, like up upwards like about nine grams or nine thousand milligrams of N-acetylcysteine within a, a short time of an overdose of say Tylenol, then you know they have a great chance of of saving their life, saving their liver and uh, getting back to normalcy because NAC is getting those glutathione levels back up. And you know, along with helping Tylenol toxicity, NAC has been shown to decrease liver and kidney toxicity related to um, chemotherapeutic agents, specifically cisplatin, which uh, you know, if, you've, if you've ever had chemotherapy, you know that man, you want everything possible to um, decrease side effects um, of the chemotherapeutic uh, medications without s decreasing its effectiveness. So talk to your oncologist about potentially using NAC in your uh, your routine if you're under going undergoing chemotherapy right now. You know, in my own practice, I would say the most common use I see and, and commonly recommend um, for patients related to NAC, um, given that you know I try to keep people away from Tylenol, acetaminophen as much as possible. And I don't personally prescribe cisplatin as a chemotherapeutic uh, at all. Um, is to um, you know use NAC for upper and lower respiratory tract infections when in chronic respiratory illnesses like say 
emphysema, COPD, bronchiectasis, um, you know, even some, some asthma conditions. And the reason being is that NAC acts as an amazing mucolytic. I mean, it basically uh, breaks these disulfide bonds um, between the, uh, the glycoproteins. Um, and when you break those bonds, you are, you are essentially thinning that mucus layer and making it easier for the body to clear the mucus um, from the respiratory tract, whereas the sinus cavity or it's the, um, the, uh, the lung tissue, the bronchioles. Uh, and you know, this could be oral, it could be a spray form, it could be nebulized, uh, but it is amazing what happens. When you clear the mucus, make it easier to clear the mucus, then um, you know, the chances of, of infection settling, you know, going from a viral infection to a bacterial infection, uh, you know, the risk is much, much less if you are consistently clearing that, that mucus and then that inflammatory response being created as, as the body tries to um, clear the infection. Because when mucus isn't cleared efficiently, then, you know, a person goes from having uh, just a, a minor infection to potentially having a very, very serious infection, uh, you know, like, say, pneumonia or um, especially bacterial pneumonia or, uh, you know, intense um, bacterial sinus infections because the body can't clear things out because we're not like in a bubble. There's always stuff coming against us day after day, no matter if we're sick or we're feeling good, there's still stuff coming against us. So our body still has to defend itself even when it's sick from uh, external insults. And, you know, inhibiting the capacity of uh, infections to harbor uh, and infectious agents to, to harbor and colonize the, uh, the lung tissue, the bronchioles, uh, our respiratory tract as a whole, uh, is paramount to making sure that uh, we don't end up, you know, in essentially an emergency situation, in a hospital situation, having to require you know, high level interventions, uh, oxygen, you know, steroids, you know, these kind of things. So we want to we want to get on it ahead of time, and um, it's one of the reasons, you know, pretty much I always have NEC in my cabinet at all times. Um, take it with me on vacations, um, and I would say, you know, any, for anybody else, that's something to strongly consider. So there's several studies that have shown that 1,200 milligrams, which tends to be about two capsules of n acetylcysteine daily, uh, reduce the rates in chronic um, obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, re reduce the rates of exasperations of symptoms, reduce... Uh, the likelihood of these patients ending up back in the hospital after getting out de and, and increase their pulmonary function tests by taking 1,200 milligrams of n acetylcysteine a day. I mean, is that not awesome? Uh, I think it's well worth the try for almost anybody with these conditions. Now, if you're a person dealing with uh, you know chronic respir respiratory disease, you understand firsthand how big a deal that is and, and how you don't want to deal with that you do not want to end up back in the hospital you do not end up on, end up on you know another round of antibiotics another round of steroids um, if at all possible so check out NAC even in the acute state as well you know there's a study that showed especially related to influenza that when elderly people consume 600 milligrams so it's not even the 12 it's just 600 milligrams which is usually about one capsule a day of n acetylcysteine for six months that they decreased their symptoms and severity of the flu. So they may have still got the flu, may still got influenza A, influenza B, say, but their symptoms, intensity, and the severity was significantly less. Not only that, but uh, a study showed that 79% of people who were in the placebo group, so those that did not get the NEC, that they became symptomatic with the flu, whereas only 25% of those in the NAC group develop symptoms. That, that's a pretty big deal. You know, if you had NAC on board, your likelihood of influenza, especially elderly, uh, was significantly decreased. So we won't like, like I said before, you know, want to take every advantage possible to prevent and decrease um, the intensity of these conditions on our body because sickness viruses are always going to be out there. So when people have chronic or acute sinus infections or, or lung conditions, glutathione uh, is used up and the resources for its production they become depleted. This is where NAC comes in. Like I've said throughout this little little chat here, NAC comes in. It acts as the rate limiting step, meaning that if you have enough NAC, you can create or cysteine specifically the the C part of NAC. You can create enough glutathione, and this anti antioxidant can get built back up, and that that means that your likelihood of progressing in a negative fa fashion is is way less, and 
the lower your glutathione levels are, you know, the more oxidative stress, the more inflammation um, you're going to have in whatever tissue it's low in. So if we can get anything in the system, build up glutathione levels, get that antioxidant support, that anti-inflammatory effect, that, anti and that infl inflammatory clearing effect of glutathione, then we're going to help a whole lot of people, including ourselves, likely stay out of intense trouble when it comes to infectious matter. And to think, you know, so many people, you know, they start pounding Tylenol, um, ibuprofen to decrease the symptoms related to, um, you know, their, their infectious state or pain kind of thing. Uh, you know, and these things, you know, they're going to deplete our body of glutathione. So that's, that's not a good idea, right? And this, this, it's rarely a good idea to take Tylenol as, they, as it is only making it more challenging for your body to clear infectious agents, especially viral agents. Whereas if you were to upregulate your glutathione levels, say by taking some, something like NAC, you're going to have a much better chance because now you're actually supporting your body as opposed to just suppressing symptoms. And, you know, our lungs, they're in the external, external world nonstop. We've got to breathe, right? If we don't breathe, we don't survive. And as you've probably noticed, our air quality isn't exactly getting a whole lot better. Uh, you know, each passing year, we got we just got more stuff out there, more more junk in the air. And if you live in a city, that's that's a huge deal. So we're inhaling you know smoke particulate, we're inhaling pollens, dust, viral particles, bacteria, you know, all manners of pollutants. We got you know car exhaust, perfumes, fire retardants on our furniture, paint. Um, the list goes on and on. But uh, don't, don't be afraid. Of, please don't be afraid of all that stuff. That's not going to help you out at all. Um, but I'm saying it is imperative that our lung antioxidant capacity stays tip top. You know, it's like, it can't be depleted. It's gotta be, it's gotta be ready to go at all times, which of course is where NAC, you know, is extremely supportive. And NACL cysteine can, you know, can be this fantastic way of, of keeping our lungs, uh, glutathione levels uh, at full kill, helping that respiratory clearance of mucus. All right, so beyond the fact that the, there's all this respiratory tract support with NEC, um, there's, a, there's a couple studies showing that in women with PCOS, PCOS polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, if they were to take 600 milligrams of NEC, so you three times per day, that they had significantly less um, menstrual cycle irregularities, uh, and they showed a decrease in free testosterone levels and insulin. And if you have had PCOS, you know, those are common things we commonly test for in PCOS. You know, testosterone levels will be through the roof, insulin levels will be through the roof, um, and that just provokes more and more symptoms, like the acne, for instance, or the hair loss. And uh, so if we can decrease the intensity of those by increasing um, antioxidant effects, anti-inflammatory effects via NAC, man, if you've had PCOS, you have PCOS, you know, you know that, that would be a blessing because PCOS can be, um, you know, it can be super challenging, super terrible. And, not to leave the gentleman out, there's also um, some studies demonstrating that N-acetylcysteine can support sperm quality um, and it can sp support sperm motility, which is a big deal given that infertility, specifically related to gentlemen and then the fact that the the male body is, is ha has at the deficiency related to fertility, you know, this is a big deal. So if you could... Um, uh, increase your fertility gentlemen your, your sperm quality and, and decrease you know the breakdown of sperm dna uh by having some nac on board man that would be huge um because so many people are wanting to have babies seemingly can't have babies uh and uh, you know it's related to the sperm quality so talk to your doctors talk to your fertility specialists I mean, maybe nac could say man can you check out the research on nac related to fertility do you think this could help us out Great question. So continuing on, and I could talk about NAC a lot. So many, so many amazing things about it. Um, I use it all the time with patients myself, and uh, you know, I think it is something that we want to keep readily available over the counter for for human use. There's a lot of um, agencies out there that are trying to uh, suppress NACs, um, uh, ease uh, of getting your hands on it, and. Uh, you know, I think that's, that's a big deal. That's a, that's a big problem because uh, as a dietary supplement, NAC is extremely benign. It's extremely beneficial, um, you know, and it potentially can help prevent a lot of people um, from from getting a, a virus and having that virus, you know, ravage their being because we're not going to stop ourselves from getting infected with viruses. And I don't know of anything that can stop us from getting infected. Uh, but 
even though we can't stop viruses from showing up in our bodies, uh, we can with you know lifestyle stuff, dietary stuff, body composition stuff, keeping our blood sugar regulated, sleeping, all, all these kind of things. We can stop the viruses from showing up and um, you know overcoming us uh, because we're gonna we're living in the world and contact with other humans is essential for life and we're not that's not going to go away anytime soon so we want our body to be able to respond optimally when um you know that viral viral entity shows up in our being we want to make sure it has all the resources it needs it's completely able to overcome and overcome in a swift manner so we can get back to hang with our family you know get back to work working out playing you know what what have you so having our antioxidant defenses in tip top shape it really is a huge part of the overcoming you know infections and uh, you know making that process a no big deal you know because like i said we live in a world that necessitates human interaction i mean that is that is a means of health us interacting with other humans and you know interacting on, on a close um, basis. If we don't interact with other humans, you know, life enjoyment is going to decrease. Health promotion is going to decrease in our being. We're, we're going to be less capable of withstanding any insult that comes our way. So it's vital given the, the aggressiveness of, um, you know, nature these days and some of the, the um, I would say, pathogenic entities out there that we accumulate every health advantage we can. And I think, I believe that, uh, you know, having optimal glutathione levels and, um, you know, supporting that via NAC is, is something that is backed by research and in my own clinical experience is extremely beneficial. So check it out. Um, talk to your doctor if, uh, you know, N-acetylcysteine might be helpful for you either, uh, you know, winter time, travel time, when you're around other people who are sick, um, or if you personally have, you know, a chronic respiratory illness infertility issues, COPD, um, polycystic ovarian syndrome, any of that going on. All right, I'm Dr. Matt. Hope this is super helpful. Please like, share, subscribe. Make sure uh, that little bell button's on so that um, you get all the updates that I bring your way. Talk to you guys later.